Also, I thought I would do a uh, introduction video for my YouTube channel, um, as I haven't done one yet, but I've got tons of videos of uh, my dogs on there and my cats. Um, so, anyway, uh, I'm Dylan. Uh, I'm 30. No, well, 12. Um, Oh yeah, uh, I'm a trans guy. I'm like pre-hormones, pre-surgery at the moment. I'm just waiting for my first appointment at Charing Cross in London. Um, so really excited about that. I actually went to a workshop on Tuesday up at the Charing Cross Hospital, and it, uh, it was really good. It was um, uh talk to you about uh, the process and what to expect and what they expect from us and stuff like that so yeah it was really cool and um, yeah I made, made quite a few friends up there um, and uh, apart from being trans I also live with a uh, chronic illness called now it's a very long name so and I still get it wrong even though I've been diagnosed with it for a long, long time, but it's called um, vaginus granulomatosis. Um, it's an autoimmune disorder. That's that was the original name for it, but it's now called granulomatosis with polyangitis or something like that. I never get that last bit right. Um, so yeah, it's an autoimmune disorder. Um, I've been in that hospital since I was seven. Um, the first sort of symptoms I had were nosebleeds. Um, uh, couldn't like nosebleeds were like they weren't short nosebleeds that were just dribbling out. They used to literally gush, gushing with blood. And because I was so young, um, and because as you can see, I have no bridge to my nose. Um, they wouldn't quartz it. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do anything about it at the hospital. Um, so, yeah, I was just left to bleed until it stopped, really. Um, and also, um, I couldn't breathe very well. I was always going up to doctors until one night I had, I had an asthma attack and I was rushed in. Um, and then they gave me inhalers and stuff, which helped. But on further inspection, um, over the last, God knows how many years, they've actually discovered that it's not asthma it's to do with the subglossic webbing inside my lungs um, so yeah um, so that that was the start of it <coughs> um, but I didn't actually get a diagnosis until I was 15, 14, 15 um, and that was by they did, they did it through uh, blood tests and uh, uh, nose bops that they took some cells and stuff and junk from out of my nose and went off and tested it. So yeah, it was gross. Um, but yeah, so it's it's been really difficult because um, I'm unable to work because of it, which sucks and I hate it. I hate not working with passion. Um, I would rather be working, but yeah. Hey hey, what can you do? So my current like oh um, the other thing is I'm hyper mobile so I can do things like that and uh, I won't show any more because it's very gross out but that's that's another that's a symptom is um oh and that's my dogs chasing the cat in the background um basically uh, my blood white so my uh, white blood cells don't do the job they're meant to do and um, instead of going around and attacking uh, viruses and illnesses and stuff when they come um, they sort of just float around and they get sticky and um, they just stick to the inside of your, it stick to your veins and then release all their stuff that's inside of them that kills viruses and stuff and then so it kills off parts of your body so it can affect all your major organs at some point or another it affects everybody 
in a completely different way. N nobody symptoms are similar, but I've met people that have had completely different. It's affected completely different parts of their body. Um, I met a guy once. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened, but um, anyway, the WG or GPA affected his fingers and um, the blood stopped going to the tips of his fingers so they they died effectively and so all of his fingers and his thumbs were all different lengths all of them where they just died off and it was bizarre I've never yeah so but so my symptoms are uh, chronic fatigue which ugh it's horrible. Um, hypermobility, like I said, that's a part of it, and that comes with chronic pain all the time because my joints are not very well supported in their um, sockets. Um, what else do I have? Oh, yeah, the subglottic webbing in my lungs, so I have problems breathing. And I've had my windpipe widened quite a few times um, due to it. Closing, closing. It doesn't ever close up completely, but obviously it gets too small, and um, yeah, then they have to dilate it with some. I'm, I'm not quite sure what they do, but I don't know. I just let them get on with it. Um, <coughs> and then obviously my nose. Um, I quite like my nose. It looks like a cute little button nose, but as you probably see, that this side of my nostril is not as open as that one, it's because that's collapsing um, and on the inside of my nose, like all my sinuses, they are thinner than they should be on one side, I think it's actually this side um, but again, because my body's attacked it we've I've talked about having it um, rebuilt, I suppose not that I want a proper nose, but I want to be able to breathe properly through my nose because um, at the moment I breathe mostly, I suppose, through my mouth, really, but it's a bit of both. Um, but the trouble with that, the complications with that would be that my body reject, rejects whatever they put in, whether that be a piece of my rib or plastic or whatever they do, they're worried about making it worse. So at the moment, well, I can breathe through at least one side. They they want to leave it as is. Um, so that's good. Um, also, it's like the lack of cartilage has affected my ears, so they're really small. Which again, I'm not worried about because <laughs> my family, or my dad's side of the family, and my brother and that all have really big ears. They're like Dumbo ears. So I'm quite glad that. I didn't uh, have any of that to worry about. Um, and what else? Some joint pain, chronic fatigue, um, lung problems. I think. I think that's it. <laughs> that is enough to be going on with. Um, so I take um, uh, uh, an immunosuppressant, which is called uh, methotrexate. Um, now I was on that in tablet form to begin with but I think it must have been about two year, two three years ago now because to begin with because obviously it's a it's an autoimmune uh, it's a immunosuppressant it's something they use on cancer patients um the medication made me feel really poorly um I had to start taking it on Friday because at that point I was still at school so I had to, it, oh it was awful, so it gave me the whole weekend to recover from it basically. I started on quite a low dose I think, um, and the first time I ever took it, oh it was awful. I just, I slept from about 6 o'clock Friday evening to, well pretty much all day that Saturday, I don't think I woke up till lunch dinner time, probably about four o'clock the next day because it just knocked me out. And then as the weeks went on that the the tiredness um 
sort of drop, you know, that sort of dropped off. That was fine. I was getting used to it. And then, um, and then it was, uh, my hair was falling out quite a bit, um, because it was long back then. Because obviously I was a girl back then, um, and it ended up with like being really thin on top, and I had this like bushy ponytail it looked ridiculous. So I cut it short. Now the only trouble I have with it is that my eyelashes fall out sometimes, and um, it's really annoying because they like fall out more than like the average they should. So yeah, it's really annoying to get like eyelashes in my eye every five minutes. Um, and then late further on, like I used to feel sick, but like when I when I first started taking it, but further on down down over the years, like I think it must have been about three years ago. Uh, um, I started actually being sick, um, and uh, it was horrible. And I knew it was a methotrexate and not anything else because I used to get these really bad stomach pains, um, sulfur tasting burps, which were vile. And then I'd be sick a couple of times, and then I was fine, and then just recovered from it. Um, so I knew it wasn't a bug because obviously if it was a bug, then you'd be thrown out for a lot longer. Um, so it took me a year to convince my doctor to either change me to something else or uh, for me to try the injections. And so um, towards the end of last year, I got taught how to inject myself with methotrexate, um, which is which was good to begin with. It was fine. But I was tolerating it well to start with, but then, as with the um, tablets, it was it was making me sick, and it's really unpredictable as well because it would just happen. You know, there was no it would be no other than like the stomach pains and that there would be no it would just come out of nowhere. I couldn't I couldn't say oh. I do. I did my injection Friday. I'm gonna be sick Tuesday. It would happen whenever. Um. So yeah, but I suppose after 15 years of being on the same medication, your body's not gonna tolerate it anymore. Um. I also am on steroids, but at the moment I'm I'm slowly coming off of that, which is really good because if I tolerate coming off the steroids and I don't have any flare ups which I'm not um, sure I'm not going to because I'm having a mini flare up at the moment <laughs> and um, the, ha uh, the skin of my hands are peeling and that, that's the sign for me and it's uh, just a general feeling of unwell like, but nothing that I need to go to the doctor for and say, oh, I need antibiotics because I've got chest infection. It's just generally my chest hurts, I'm a bit chesty, I'm a bit snotty, but I'm alright. So that's, yeah, that's sort of like a, a mini flare. When I have a full on flare, which I had back in March, I think it was, I ended up in hospital. Um, Basically, I started off with like a rash on my face, and my face was a whole face was bright red, and um, that started on the Monday. And I saw the nurse on the Wednesday, and she said, "Oh, it's an allergic reaction." I'm like, "If it was an allergic reaction, then surely, you know, something with it. I, you know, I hadn't changed anything at all, and um, <coughs> my ears were hurting as well. I had an ear infection." Which was really weird because I don't usually get ear infections. I haven't had one for a long time. And um, anyway, so she gave me sort of some like, antihistamines and that, and it just didn't it didn't make the slightest bit of difference. And then by sort of early hours, Friday morning, I was up at A and E because um, I just I couldn't breathe. I was really wheezy. And um, so I was given a couple of nebulizers and a shot of steroids, and boom. Face had cleared up, I could breathe, my ears were feeling better. I knew it was a flare, but because it's um, such a rare condition, people don't know, even the doctors, don't know how to treat it. 
which is really annoying because like when I went to A&E, they just they were just like they had no clue what my condition was. And there's me. I'm trying to I can't even breathe, and I'm trying to explain to them. I said, look, just give me nebulizer and a shot of flipping steroids and sorted. And lo and behold, it worked. But um. Yeah, and also sometimes when I have uh, flare-ups, I remember, oh, I must have been about 18, a major flare-up, it, oh, it was huge, it was probably the last big, big one, um, and all my muscles in between my ribs, all inflamed, and oh my god, the pain was, I just hurt from head to toe, my temperature just skyrocketed, I couldn't breathe. Oh, it was horrendous. So obviously, um, got rushed into hospital for that, and I had to stay in for a bit. But luckily, touch wood, I haven't. Well, <laughs> I say touch wood. This year, I've had five fractures and a flare-up. So yeah, going back to the coming off of steroids, I'm not hopeful at all that it's gonna go well. But we shall see. Um, so yeah, um, what else am I on? Oh, monofolic acid, which is meant to help with the side effects of um, the methotrexate, which I don't think it does. Um, and then renisidin for my stomach, because of all the being sick and all the medications they're shoving at me. Um, and for pain relief, I am on, well, I say relief, for pain to make it tolerable, I'm on um, Tramadol and Paracetamol. Um, it's alright. It makes it so I can tolerate the pain. Um, it doesn't make it so it goes away because it, it doesn't go away. Um, but, yeah, I'd rather it. I, sp I suppose. Being, in, being having the pain tolerable is better than being in pain, complete pain, I suppose. But yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, oh, and I've also been diagnosed with <laughs> yeah some more stuff, uh, bipolar disorder. Um, so for that, I am on a very low dose of quetiapine. Um, I'm only on 25 milligrams of that, and that's literally because um, I don't, I can't sleep without it. Um, so yeah, because I I I was on a really high dose, and um, I worked alongside my psychiatrist um, to lower that dose because I hated the weight gain. Weight gain was ridiculous. I'm five foot three, and I went from Around eight and a half, nine stone, was, which I varied between. So my heaviest was eleven stone, eleven, and oh, I was such a chub. I looked awful. Um, and now on just twenty-five milligrams, my weight I've dropped like two and a half stone by doing nothing. Literally, I haven't changed my eating habits. I haven't changed. Uh. <laughs> How much I exercise, because that 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 doesn't make a difference when you're on quetiapine. When you're on a high dose of quetiapine, um, it just slows your whole system down, and you can eat healthily and exercise. Really, you know, um, and it doesn't make the blindest bit of difference. So, oh, I tell you what, I was so chuffed. When I lost all that weight, because now I'm back down to nine stone four, which is not completely what that I um, was down to before, but um, you know I've got older, so you tend to put weight on as you get older anyway, don't you? So, um, and it's harder to lose, but I'm happy at nine stone four to be honest. So it'd be brilliant if I got back down to not bang on nine stone. That would be that'd be awesome, but. I'm not particularly worried. Um, so yeah, but um, I also got diagnosed about nine years ago with um, emotionally unstable borderline personality disorder, which I uh, I loathe that 
diagnosis. Um, ugh, I just lose it. Um, but now I don't even qualify for that diagnosis because I don't have, I think it's the, I, I don't know how many traits you need to have to qualify, but I don't have those traits because I did something called DBT, which is um, dialectical behaviour therapy, and to that I owe my life, to be honest. I owe my life and just everything, well, the person I am now. Um, but that it didn't come without lots of hard work. I worked really, really hard. I and um, it just sort of gives you a different outlook. And yeah, it it was amazing therapy, and I highly recommend it to anyone, anyone with mental health problems. Um, yeah, and I and I think it was also it helps me because. You sort of helps you with look at build a more stable stable sense of yourself, I think. And I sort of went into a little bit of sort of self discovery and stuff like that. And I think that was one of the main well, one of the catalysts. I wouldn't say main. One of the catalysts of me coming out as transgender. I think that helped me a lot because I just realised that you know I was never a girl only in physical body like my brain has never been wired female it never has been um and I think doing that therapy helped me realize that and be and to be confident enough to be comfortable to come out and to go hey I'm a boy so yeah um I know this is pretty long introduction video but yeah, it's my YouTube. Um so I'm gonna do more videos on well what well, whatever you want me to really. Um um I'll probably do some more in depth videos of living with chronic illness. Um living as a tri transgender guy and living with mental health problems. Um, so, but I'll probably do them, I'll probably do them more separately as dogs are chasing the cat again. So, um, I don't get, I don't get confused with what I'm talking about. And, um, you guys can follow, um, properly. So, yeah, I'm Dylan, and that's it, really. <laughs> I rock. Um, so please uh, like, share, and comment, and with any questions you like, that's totally cool. And um, any videos you want me to do, any questions you want me to answer, and um, yeah, subscribe to my page. Peace.